starting with front facing camera 4k 30 fps and in my opinion this is one of the weakest points of this device now i have locked the exposure when it was more cloudy the exposure was just going up and down it was like very overexposed so i'm going to show you this now 4k 30 fps and i like the fact that i can switch microphone to be facing this way so for vlogging you should not be disappointed here it is very cloudy day it is hard to see the dynamic range but uh, okay when you tap it in you can clearly see that you know it is struggling with that dynamic range but let's switch to a uh, 4k 60 fps now because uh, i need to take the dogs for a quick walk and this is 4k 60 fps again not really impressed with that dynamic range so my suggestion is just to tap the exposure and then lock it otherwise it's just not really pleasing in my opinion but other than that you know stabilization is looking pretty good colors are pretty accurate oh my dog is i need to check on that so <laughs> Let's move on to video now. This is Ultra Arango 4K 30 FPS. I'm happy here, you know, with dynamic range stabilization. I really love this very wide field of view here on Ultra Arango. And finally, we can switch between the lenses. Danny, Danny, here. See it. times two. Look at those colors. Stay there. Let me actually go a little bit further. 3.2 optical zoom. This is five times optical zoom and let's go all the way up to times 15. Wow, that's pretty awesome. The quality is still doing a pretty good job. And switching back to ultra wide angle, that is pretty far away, I have to say. Okay, as you can see, I am using a Leica Authentic throughout the whole video. And I think the biggest selling point here is the zoom. I mean, look at this. Wow. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Okay, 60 FPS and again I don't have any complaints here you know I can switch between the lenses nice and smoothly the colors stay exactly the same okay guys 4k 120 frames per second because of that huge one inch sensor you've got that natural blurry background effect now stabilization is not the greatest so I wouldn't really suggest moving along a lot because you know, you'd be better off just staying still, but a quality is pretty impressive. I am waiting for the software update. Hopefully it's going to be like a major one because they still need to improve on, on, you know, the selfie camera because of the exposition levels and things. I'm not really impressed with that. And also the sound quality from microphone when it's windy, it's pretty, the footage is unusable, honestly. Other than that, 
I have to say I'm pretty impressed with that one inch sensor. I mean, look at this portrait shot here, like, wow, look at the quality. What I'm also impressed by is the fact that I can go to the edit and change the aperture to make that effect even more blurry. Or if I don't want any blurry background, I'll just go F16. That's pretty awesome. This is one of the filters I'm using with movie mode. It's great because uh, I can change the aperture here and then you can even upload different lots to make that footage just a little bit more unique. By the way, if you are enjoying my content, huge sub to the channel will be greatly appreciated, guys. We're getting close to 50,000 subscribers. Thank you for all the support. It's worth mentioning when you want to use macro modes, you have to swipe here. And you see, I thought this was only available on the main sensor, but one of my subscribers, huge shout out to you, told me that this actually works on all the lenses. So all you have to do, turn that off, switch the lens, then go on super macro and on and on, which is a bit of shame because every time you want to change the focal length, you just have to come out of the macro mode, zoom in closer, and then do it again. But I'm going to use this feature and try to take some decent shots now. Another useful feature is definitely the fact that you can pick that 50 megapixel resolution on each of the lenses. You know, so even on the further zoom times five, when you get closer and when you zoom it in, check this out, you still get a lot of details. I mean, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? I have switched to HDR mode. Sadly, it's only 1080p. Uh, but color is looking very natural and then great. I can, you know, switch between the lenses. What do you think? Well, let's move on to some low to light conditions now. This is maximum zoom times 15 at night. And I have to say, I am pretty impressed with that. Let's go 3.2. You know, we've got those two amazing optical zooms. Times two. Main sensor and ultra wide angle. But let's take some pictures now.
Right, this is selfie. I wouldn't really recommend using it when it's dark, but there is a dedicated uh, video mode for the main sensor, which I'm gonna switch that now. It's only 1080p, 30 FPS, but I think the quality is way better. Please remember, this is not a selfie, this is the main sensor. I'll take a couple of selfies now. You know, just using that multi-camera future, and I have to say, I mean, I'm so impressed with this device. The hardware is just incredible. They still need to improve a little bit on the, you know, on the software. Beautiful portrait photography, macro photography, again, pretty amazing. I don't have any complaints about night photography too, stabilization, you know, the list goes on and on. However, in my opinion, this is not the best smartphones that you can find on the market. I have compared this with Vivo X100 Pro, and in my opinion, Vivo is just a little bit better. If you haven't a chance to watch that video, I'll put a link up there and I'll catch you guys in the next one.